my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is Quilted Witch Day, and I am going to show you the quilting on Critter Quilt number two. I don't think I did that yet, and we have to pick a binding color. I have a thought, but I'm gonna pull a bunch of different bindings out and look at what will work, because remember it has a lot of green in it, so we're gonna be doing that as well. Today, one of the celebrations is, uh, for today is Monkey Day. You know sock monkeys. If you have sock monkey quilts, share them. There are some really cute sock monkey quilts out there. Now I did one with fabric that's been given to charity already. I did it with sock monkey fabric and it was so cute, but it's been given to charity. I don't own that one anymore, but I do have some banana fabric. <laughs> oh my gosh, this makes me smile. Oh, here's a piece of it from a 10 inch square, I think. And then I actually have, it looks like a fat quarter. Um, and this is one of Tula Pink's fabric lines that she did a while ago. And I just, I think I had it in green as well, maybe, but monkeys and bananas, right? Perfect, perfect. I'm also thinking, gosh, maybe I should throw a piece of this in my uh, what's for breakfast because bananas are for breakfast, right? Uh, at least they are at my house. And I thought, oh, I should put a piece. I wonder if I can fit a piece of this in that quilt somewhere. I'm going to have to do something. Maybe in the, maybe in the settings, uh, use some different fun fabrics or do put them on the back somehow. Anyways, I'm taking the small piece and I am putting it over to the side over there <clears throat> so that I can put it in the bin for what's for breakfast. What's for breakfast is an applique quilt along. Let me, let me just show you the, the little image. This is applique, free applique quilt along we're doing. It is whimsical beyond whimsical, and it is not real big, has nine uh, applique blocks for breakfast uh, things, breakfast things. Uh, and it's gonna be super fun, super fun, starting in the beginning of January. We're gonna do it on Wednesdays. It'll um, run along the Peace Block Wednesday, eventually when that starts uh, a little bit later in January. So, okay. Let's talk about The Quilted Witch. So this is the book that we are sewing. Some of you are doing The Witch. Uh, the Fat Quarter Shop and uh, is running a slightly different schedule than I am. I am trying to do something most weeks. Uh, we'll probably have a week or so that's not particularly around Christmas or whatever, but uh, yeah, because I just want us to move along. My version will have no witch. <laughs> It has, it's the Quilted Witch's Garden. Mine is the Fall Garden. And we have the blocks. We, the Royal We, the blocks are up here. And I'm going to get the other camera in a minute. But what we are on this week, it is called the Twilight Star Block. So here's the block. And you only have to make two, which is good, right? It's good. Yeah, be prepared. Next week, there's a lot of little blocks. Uh, which will we'll probably span, you'll probably be span making them, unless you get on a roll and you get them done, but you know, they'll probably be something you keep working on. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But this week I'd suggest you get both of them done if you can, if this is one of your primary projects that you're working on. Uh, so the quilt just starts. Where do they go up there? Okay, first let me just show you on this one. Here is the first one up here at the top, and the other one is down here right on the uh, skirt line. Okay, so here's the, right next to the cat and the skirt line. So my layout is witchless. We have a witchless layout. And so I, let's see, here we go. So I will kind of show you what's going on with this. Mine has uh, the, this side is the same. Oh, let me just put it down here. So this side here to above the broom, maybe I could get the whole picture in Pat, to above the broom, this side is the same, is the same. Those are the same. Uh, and we will eventually here, after next week actually, because we need these little blocks, after next week we can sew this unit here. This block goes down in this area on mine. It gets switched down because mine is a little bit more narrow. So there's some of this, you know, some of this space is gone. It's shifted over. Uh, so this block here is shifted down, but like this section is the same on mine over here. So that's kind of how it goes. And then this part will have pumpkins and f some other pumpkins and fall leaves and blocks in it. And there'll be no broom. So it'll, it'll shift up. And that's how my layout is. 
Okay, let's let's see what we got. Now I'm going to get the other camera and and talk through it. I don't have color placement exactly. I mean, I know this will go here and that will go there because they're big blocks. Um, but everything else is fluid as to what, where the colors are. So based on like the colors I have up here with the orange and browns, a little bit of aqua over here, I think I want to pick, um, let me just see what the, the dark, what the dark brown looks like up there. There's the dark brown. Uh, I, you know, so it might not be because this is, I chose to have that one there. That's brown, brown, brown. It might be the other one looks better. Uh, it's a little tilty. Oh, see, now I like that one better. And this is all kind of visual. You know, what do I like? I've got stuff in the way here. I'm trying not to knock on the floor. Okay, so this is about the width. It might be a little bit wider than what you see here. And it's going to be a little bit longer than this because there's a cat block that goes in there somewhere. Uh, maybe it's right under here. This actually will be a cat block and that'll be moved down a little bit. And so there is how they are looking. And once we get pumpkins, the pumpkins will be primarily in kind of this area over here with the cat anchoring over here. So that is so cool. So after the Twinkle Stars, we can set. We can start setting things, setting things up here, and then we'll make pumpkins and leaves. So every week when I get these blocks out, I put them approximately the right place. I am not putting them like exactly in a spot the same each time. I'm sort of messing around with the layout because I don't have to I don't have to do anything too solid until probably after we do the twinkle stars. So next week when we get some twinkle stars made, then I can do that top we, we with the royal we, we can do that top left and actually sew it together. So we can take some of this section here and sew it up, which looks like, you know, down to the cat. Down to the, because the cat's a little bit later. Um, so we can, unless I decide soon to do the cat, which would be kind of out of order from the book, but uh, we might, we might. If you're, if you're a fan of that, let me know in the comments if you're a fan of that. Because the thing is, if we do the cat, then we can do that whole left side if we did the cat after the um yeah that might be the that might be the way to go what do you think see there's no there's this doesn't have to be a solid uniform plan it can adjust as we go along till we see like kind of how we feel about it and it's like what i'm thinking is that we would be highly motivated all of us to be able to sew together a whole left side of this quilt and set it um so that would be that would be super cool be a long banner, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, okay, I'm thinking about that. You can chime in and let me know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, I am going to go get uh, the stand and put the critter quilt up behind me so we can talk about it. Here she is, critter quilt number two with all of your blocks, pretty much. I don't know that I have any finished blocks. Oh no, I got little butterflies. I got butterflies in this one. These are my blocks. Uh, and the rest were your blocks and my setting. Oh no, did I make the chicken? I made the chicken too. <laughs> I did the chicken too. Okay, let me just let you scan down a second and see everybody. Uh, so I used a bunch of green for this. The whole, they pull it together. Although on this one, there's a lot less sashing because some of the blocks were just bigger and that's just the way it happens, just the way it works out. You never know until you start putting them together. I mean, if you want more between each block, then your quilt grows. And I did not want this quilt to be any bigger than this because facilities need to hang it. And this is a good size for that. This is big enough. Uh, so I have a lot of green, which picks up with the green in the unicorn, uh, picks up in green in some of the blocks like the dragonfly body up there. Um, yeah, there's some green in the turtle. So anyway, green was the common fabric to kind of pull it together. Now for the binding, I am going to pull a couple of fabrics because I'm thinking I could go with maybe a darker gray if I can find a darker gray or a darker green. 
So I don't want to do a, I don't think I want to do a light binding. I don't know that I had enough of that green polka dot. Plus that's a, that's a big polka dot. Let me just, let me see if I can scroll. So there is the green polka dot and you can see it's a pretty, pretty wide dot, a pretty big dot. And I do have it. I do have it. So let me just show you the bin of green fabrics that I have. Okay. There's a bin, a bin, a bin, and lots and lots of green options. Most are not dark. So I do not have a lot of dark green. There we go. And remember I'm showing you, let's just talk about this. Remember I am showing you things that I am doing for myself. Uh, I know this is going to somebody else and I think it's fun to get all of your input as well because uh, this one is a group project but things like when I was doing my fig tree, my Christmas fig and picking the red stripe, that's a personal project. That's my project. I'm not trying to teach you something. I'm just trying to share what I do and hopefully encourage you to sew. Um, occasionally people get a little crazy in the comments. You get a little crazy down there uh, telling me that I'm not doing something right. So uh, I delete those by the way. I delete those comments. And uh, so don't go, you can't go looking for them. They're already gone. But um, remember when you talk to me in the comments, I'm a person and I'm just sharing my life with you. I'm not here, you're not paying for a class with me. Um, you know, it's just me doing my thing, how I enjoy doing it and what pleases me. And so uh, if you get something out of that, I'm so appreciative for you to be here. Um, but um, you know, if you're gonna kind of not think I should be doing it a different way, just sort of keep that to yourself or tell your best friend. Um, okay, got it, got it. Let's look, let's look. I do have, I do have a lot of this green left. Holy moly, why did I think I didn't have very much? I was like, oh, I bought a bunch of this and I'd forgotten that was the one I bought a bunch of. So if I wanted to, I can make the binding out of this. I don't know that that's that impressive. <laughs> Is that the right word? Um, the dot on dot. The one thing about that dot on dot is it, it has the potential to feel messy, to feel messy to me. Uh, yeah, I think I'd rather do something else than the dot something else in the dot. I was hoping maybe I had something dark, like this little, oh, like this little piece here. I do not have enough of that. Um, so that won't work. I do have some other greens, you know, as always shades of green. This is kind of a, I would call this more of a clear color green. Uh, so I do have like this dot here that would be, that's a little bit more celery green to me. It's a little bit different green. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, it's not bad, but there might be better things. There just might be better things. Now the, uh, the backing is this, and it just has a lot of pattern and it's a kind of a really different green. And so I don't really want that for the binding. What else do I have some of my fabric, my green, which is kind of similar to this dot, but different. It's, it's got a different tone. See, like they're not the same. Um, so mine, oh, I like that better. I like that better. And there's tons of it. I have enough. That's from Promise Me. So that green is good. That green is good. Do I have something else in here? Uh, no. I mean, they're my they're little pieces, but they're not big enough. Okay, the other thing was I thought was gray. Because when you look at this, um, the Lisa, the unicorn, is a large piece of gray. And there's a um, sort of gray undertones, gray, 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 gray on the llama. See there, see the llama? So there's a lot of gray. What does that look like? I have two grays that I thought might work. One is kind of the medium tone, which is very much like what is the unicorn, you know, behind there like that. Or I have this, which is more, a little bit more charcoal. 
and it'll give it a nice dark. So I'm leaning towards that or the green. That or the green. I kind of like the dark. I, I am a person who, who really likes to finish a piece off, usually with a darker edge. Um, if this was a smaller polka dot, I'd probably be like, yep, polka dot. But because this is a really narrow binding, I mean, really narrow border, it's a little narrow border, I feel like it's too messy to put this on there uh, as binding. It just, the polka dots all just sort of go like crazy, <laughs> which is not bad, but I feel like I can do better. I can feel like I can sort of, uh, finish it better, have a finished view better. And so this is, I, I like this. So between this and this, green or the charcoal, like the charcoal. So let me know, I would like to hear, I would like to hear what you think. Um, I have my leanings, but you never know. I could, sometimes I change my mind. I haven't quite 100%, 100% said I'm gonna do this or that. So I've got the hanging sleeve. A couple of people asked how wide how, how wide this is. This one's maybe about four inches, four and a half inches. Uh, you know, if you have a hanging rod, you know, stick it underneath here and just, you can make it longer. You know, just don't be skimpy. Just don't be trying to like have, be, don't be so darn frugal. Like, <laughs> or cheap, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't. Just give it, a, just, just use a little bit more fabric. Somebody else had a question. They said, should this match the backing? You know, mine is going to match the back. You know, should it be the same fabric? Not so much match, but uh, the word match, but it should it be the same fabric? So here is our gorgeous backing sent by one of our friends. If, if you are the one that sent me this, email me. So I have your name and I'll put it on the label because I did not keep your name along with this or at least if I did, I can't find it now. Um, but this is the elephant fabric. And so some, once somebody asked, should it be the same fabric for the hanging sleeve or something different? And I would say that probably 99.999% of us will dislike the hanging sleeve to disappear. So it will be the same fabric. But occasionally, and what's happened in this lady's case, is that she no longer had any of that fabric that was on the backing, but now wanted to add a hanging sleeve. So in that case, you could just go for something that's green, you know, maybe that, well, maybe not that particular one, but find a green that, that is similar and use it, you know, use it because then it will blend a little bit better rather than slapping a big dark, you know, hanging sleeve on there. Also, in the case of uh, a couple people, you've already put your binding on, then you decide you want to hang it in a show, or you decide now you do want to hang it in your home, or you all of a sudden you're going to gift it to somebody and they want to hang it in their home. And so, you have to put a hanging sleeve on, but you've already done your binding. In that case, you're just going to hand sew the top edge and the bottom edge. You'll just put it up there as close to the binding as you can is how I would do it, as close to the binding as possible, and turn under both the top and the bottom edge, and then you will hand stitch with the top, hand stitch down the bottom. And so that will be your, <clears throat> your task, your task to get it on there. And that works perfectly fine, I've done that, no big deal, um, you just, uh, yeah, that's just how it works. Let me, I think those were the two main questions about the hanging sleeve. I mean, it is a, such a simple concept. Uh, there are places out there where people advocate like putting a fold in it. And I found that after hanging hundreds of pieces that I don't really need to have any fold or mess around. It works perfectly fine. Maybe if you were hanging it someplace that had a big jumbo rod of some sort that was going through there, it would buckle. But anything that's like a normal curtain rod size, <coughs> you're fine. It just works out really, really fine. Two other things in my Get It Done series is I did get the rest of the, uh, the other four blocks cut uh, to do my second um, uh, high tee, the smaller high tee with the nine blocks. So now they're all cut. So I can go ahead and sew those over the next uh, 
few days or whatever. And I also did the binding and the backing for my mushroom, oh my stars. So here is the backing. So now I'm deciding, do I baste it myself and just do a wave stitch, really simple? I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking of that. So here is the backing. Can you see the seam? You probably should be able to. It's over here, right here. There's the seam, but it worked out super nice. So that is the mushroom. Oh, my stars. Yeah, I'm thinking of just um, basting it and using it in the evenings. I find doing a wave stitch really just sort of mindless. <laughs> and I would probably just do it vertical because then it's like a mental game. There's less of them because it's longer than it is wider. That's my plan. That's my thought on my plan. Okay, my friends, I think, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wrap it up. I had two things come. One, this is from Mary in Michigan, who found a wonderful mushroom card for me. She has a birthday card, but she said she put it in a very special place and it did not appear until just recently. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit uh, after my birthday, uh, but thank you. I love it. I just love them with the little faces. They're so cute. And then this came with no name. So somebody sent this to me. They sent me actually the kit to do this mushroom, this, this mushroom collage. Somewhere, I don't know whether somebody showed this to me on a picture, but it is, the, they sent the heat, the, the steam of steam that goes and, and this, so it's so darling. How, how big is that? Where is the size? It doesn't say on the front, the size. I'm sure it's not that big, but that is super, super darling. So I appreciate it. And remember the sewing machine that I couldn't read? I didn't know who it came from, the sewing machine ornament that I didn't know who it came from? It turns out my friend Jane sent it to me. <laughs> Jane is in Australia and she had it shipped and it you know, didn't have a note that said it was from her. And so she wrote and told me, did you get an ornament? And it's like, yes. <laughs> and so that was from her. Okay, my friend, thoughts. I'm, I'm open, I'm, Open for business on thoughts on the binding for this one. I am going with, whoops, where are they? The dark charcoal or the green? Which camp are you in? All right, I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.